In the first video, we saw that accuracy is misleading when we have class imbalance. But so far, we have been using dot score method to assess our models, which returns accuracy by default. So we need other metrics to assess our models. In the last video, we talked about confusion matrix. And in this video, we are going to talk about three commonly used matrix based on confusion matrix. Recall, precision, and F1 score. Now note that these matrix are there to only help us assess our models. And later in the lecture, we will talk about a few ways to actually address this class imbalance problem. Just to remind ourselves, I'm creating our logistic regression pipeline again using standard scalar and logistic regression. I'm fitting our pipeline. I'm predicting with our pipeline on the validation set. And then I'm calling this confusion matrix function to get true negatives, false positives, false negatives, and false positives. And here is how our confusion matrix look, looks like. Now that we know true positives, true negatives, and false positives and false negatives, let's look at our three matrix. Our first metric is recall. Recall tells you among all positive examples, how many did you identify? So the formula for recall is true positive over true positives plus false negatives, which also means true positives over number of positives. So let's try to calculate recall. This is our confusion matrix and we have 64 true positives because we are considering fraud as our positive class and we have 38 false negatives. So these are the examples that were missed by our logistic regression model. So our recall is going to be 0 0.62. Okay, so we have 64 true positives and 38 false negatives. Okay, so this is interesting because our accuracy with logistic regression was 0 0.9991. And when you look at this different metric recall, we get this recall of 0 0.6275. So the model is not really doing very well here. It is missing many fraud transactions. Our next metric is precision. Precision tells you among the positive examples you identified, how many were actually positive? So the formula for precision is true positives over true positives plus false positives. And here is our confusion matrix. And how many true positives do we have? We have 64 true positives. So the numerator is the same for recall and precision but the denominator is different. So we have 64 true positives and uh, eight false positives. So our precision is going to be 64 over 64 plus eight, which is 0 0.8889. So logistic regression is giving a reasonable precision score of 0 0.8889 but kind of a low recall score in this particular case. Very often you need one number or one score to use in say hyperparameter optimization. F1 score combines precision and recall and gives us this number. It uses this formula to calculate the score and let's calculate it on our own. In our case, our F1 score is 0 0.7356. Let's look at all metrics at once on our fraud data set. In our case, accuracy is pretty high, 0 
error is pretty low precision is reasonable 0 0.888 recall is kind of low and f1 score is also kind of low in the previous slides we calculated precision recall and f1 score on our own now scikit-learn also has functions to calculate these matrix and you can import them from sklearn.matrix and here I'm calculating all these matrix. As we can see here, the scores calculated by us and scores given by scikit-learn, they match. So this is good. Scikit-learn provides this convenient function called classification report, which gives us all information about precision recall and F1 score. So these are our classes, zero and one. I'm giving them names. Uh, for zero, I'm calling it non-fraud. And for one, I'm calling it fraud. And here is precision recall and F1 score for fraud as well as non-fraud. So before we were considering fraud as positive class, but in this classification report, it considers each class as positive and calculates precision recall and F1 score. So these scores, they match with what we got before when we consider fraud as positive class. And these scores, non-fraud, we didn't calculate them, but these are calculated by considering non-fraud as the positive class. We also see macro average and weighted average here. What do they represent? Macro average gives equal weight to different classes. In, in our particular case, we uh, fraud class was more important to us. And so we only looked at precision recall and F1 score for fraud class. But in some cases, both classes are important. Or if you have multi-class classification problem, then you have different number of examples for each class, but precision recall and F1 score for all classes is important to you. In that case, you would go with macro average. You want to give equal importance to all classes. On the other hand, in case of weighted average, you give equal importance to each example. So in our particular case, non-fraud has more examples. And so weighted average is one here. Now, which one should be used in what context is up to you. If in your problem, all classes are equally important, then go with macro average. And if each sample is equally important, then go with weighted average. Okay, so, so far, what all things have we seen? We have seen that accuracy is misleading when you have class imbalance. Confusion matrix provides this nice way to break down errors made by your model. We looked at three matrix, which are based on confusion matrix, precision, recall, and F1 score. And it is important what you consider as positive class when you are calculating precision recall and F1 score. If you flip what is considered as positive or negative, you are going to end up with different true positives, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. And so you will have different precision, recall, and F1 scores. Now in this lecture, so far we have looked at many definitions and there is a lot of terminology here. I have created this cheat sheet, which has definition for confusion matrix and accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, there are also these other terms people tend to use, true negative rate, false positive rate, and false negative rate. So you'll find all the definitions and examples for each in this cheat sheet. Cross-validate by default uses accuracy as the scoring metric, but we can pass other scoring metrics uh, to cross-validate using this scoring parameter. In this particular case, I'm passing accuracy, F1 score, recall, and precision 
to this scoring. And when I call cross validate now, I get validation accuracy, train accuracy, validation F1 score, train F1 score, validation recall, train recall, validation precision, and train precision. So I'm getting all these different matrix for my train and validation splits in each fold. The scoring parameter can take string or a list as we are doing here, or it can also take a dictionary. And you can also define your own scoring method. If you have a specific application and your own scoring method, you can define your scoring function and pass it to cross-validate.